Blue Eyes was fun, but ultimately it ended in failure. This time around, I want to win. So on a budget of only $25 per week, we're going to build a competitive PK deck that can not only beat content creators, but also top locals and take on regionals when they return. Join me on this journey to become the next king of games. This is sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh! Road to Kingship. Week 18. The series has finally become an adult. It can vote, it can go off to college, it can go die in a war, it can do all sorts of great things that you can do when you're an adult now. But most importantly, it means we get to open more Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now last week, we did pretty well. We went 2-1, which is not bad at all for this deck, and this week I want to shoot for the nice old 3-0. I think it's something that's very achievable to us, and I think it'd be really fun to do. Now to achieve that goal, we're going to open more gold and more dark neo stars so we can get our Cherubinis, our Fusion Destinies, and our Vertes. Now once we pull the Verte and the Fusion Destiny, I've actually got a spicy little plan that I want to try before we pull the DP. You'll see soon enough. Speaking of DP, I have a question for y'all. Make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Should we end the series once we've gotten our DP engine fully up and running, or should we go for the Brave Token engine? Now, the issue with the Brave Token engine is we need play sets of ultra rares, specifically Rite of Aramisia, or whatever it's called, and the Water Witch. Now, with a set like Grand Creators, getting these ultra rares can be very difficult because you only get three ultra rares per box. So getting a play set of these is going to take months, if not close to a year, if my luck is bad. Now, I am going to be opening Grand Creators regardless because I need the Psychic Weed Dealer and I need the Emergency Teleports, especially if that card goes to 3, though I don't know if we'd run it to 3, but in any case, I don't know if I want to spend the time opening that much product just for that engine when I could be moving on to other things, so let me know down below. Finally, it'd be really awesome if you could hit that like and subscribe button. My goal is 1k subscribers this year, and we are only currently 10 away from 300. So if you want to help me get to 300 by the end of the month, that would be super awesome. Finally, of course, check out a couple of the videos I make other than Sealed Only. Recently, I put out a video where I had a podcast with uh, Let's Play Pokemon, where we talked about the pros and cons and the differences and similarities of Pokemon TCG and Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. I think it's really interesting. We bring up a lot of points. And it's very informative for you who have never seen the uh, Pokemon TCG in action or never played it. Now, with that all the way, let's go and open some packs. All right, this week's opening is going to be done in two parts because I have very, very bad self-control and I really want to know what's in the rest of this maximum gold. So you'll see the Dark Neo Storm after a little jump cut after this. Let's see what we got. Give me a Verte. Verte, Verte, Verte. Give me the Corn Snake Boy thing. Anyway, we got... Ooh, you want to focus there, buddy? Golden Land Forever. Ava, not the Ava I like. Uh, Mystic Mine, Uwu, Woo, uh, Bow Wow Bark, Urgent Schedule, we have plenty of secret rares of that, Ray, Summon Limit, ooh, I do love me a Floodgate, alright, Verte or Bust, Verte or Bust, I can easily get more of these, but like, I'd like to not, so I can spend my time looking for Cherubini, the uh, other Link 2 that I'd like, ooh, wow, why won't you, Ugh. these packs are like, really strange to me, alright, got Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, Numeron Guy, Altergeist Silk, Rose go with our Ray, and Black Awakening, Cold Talker, and Super Dora. Great. Wonderful. Nothing we need. Not even something cool like Axis Code or something. <sighs> so you got Ray, Elixir, Code Talk Converted. Can't make that because it's a dark or it's a light. Dang. Do I play Mystic Mine? No, we don't play Mystic Mine. All right, I'll see you in the Dark Neo Storm portion. All right, well, unfortunately, gold did not treat us too well this week, so hopefully the Dark Neo Storm portion will. Um, if you notice, I chopped this up into two bits. That's because I was very impatient and wanted to open the rest of my gold while the Dark Neo Storm was still in the mail. Um, just because, you know, I, I have a problem with uh, cards. Anyway, boop. what do we got in here? We got Beat Raptor and Shooting Riser Dragon. I think Shooting Riser is actually pretty cool. Um, if I do end up doing the side quest for a virtual world, maybe uh, maybe I'll play it in there. Any Hazel, we got Altergeist. I've never seen this card before. Uh, Exis the Dolphin, Pegasus Wing, Cloudy and Aerosol. Crackdown's actually really good. Uh, Glass Souffle is not terrible. Dino Wrestler, Goki the Solid Ogre, and Assault Sentinel. Crackdown's actually not a terrible card. I might run that. Um, stealing Monsters, always good. 
Anyway, we got World Legacy Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger to a story that no one knew what happened in it. Deus Ex Crawler, Sneaky Good. Pegasus Wing, Memories of Hope, that's our second one. And we got this guy, World Legacy Dragon Marduk. Grid Sweeper, Loud Cloud, if you know what I'm saying, he's ripping that fat cloud. Valkyrie Chariot, and Speed Lift. Okay, just give me a Cherubini, Dark Neostorm. Don't, don't be like, don't be like your brothers. Uh, last season who just would not give me what I wanted and those ones I needed comments from just give me like the super or the secret that I need Anyway, we got this guy Mord Schlag Firewall Guardian. So are you just shackles danger excitement mystery? Chaos betrayer. This looks like a this looks like a despia card speed lift world legacy collapse and dino wrestler Okay, nothing playable except for the crackdown. I'll take it. All right. OTS pack for a week 18. Hopefully this is the last week I have to do this, but you yeah, know, we'll see. We'll see how the, the the funny the funny thing is happening. Anyway, we got the speederoid marble machine. We have the unknown synchron. Unknown why they put it in here. Speed recovery. Rush warrior and a Leerless Phantom Feathers. We're not cheesing our way to a Takatom Borg and a Terror Top. That's okay though. Well, there wasn't really too much we got new this week to add to the deck. But that's okay, there's still gonna be changes. First off, we're adding in the IDP that we have, but have not yet used for some reason. It's a great card, uh, well you can activate it. Special summon a card from your opponent's graveyard, and if it shares a type with a card your opponent controls, banish them both. This is our out to Dragoons or any other problematic untargetable monsters, and sometimes you can grab something for extension, it's not bad. That's it for the main deck changes. For side deck, we are actually adding in our two alphas, because hey, it's a poor man's Pankratops, and hey, why not? It's that two, three instead of one. I think this will be really good for going second, can help us really break some problematic boards. We'll see how it works out. I'm really interested in trying it. But yeah, that's it. Let's see how those games go this week. So for our first match this week, we're playing against Mel, who is playing Bees. Now, I have never actually played against Bee Troopers before. They're a very sick deck, but I've never actually seen them in action. So let's see how this goes. Anyways, we go through our normal combo. We get out our Bardiche. We send our Torn Scales. We get our boots to hand, bring back the torn scales, bring out the boots, overlay them, and then pop them so we can get two fours back. The same old, same old. Then we're going to bring out our two fours, and we're going to overlay them for a dark rebellion, exceeds dragon. We're going to rank up that dark rebellion and dark requiem, set our chalice, and pass to them. Now, they're going to lead off with a forbidden droplet, and forbidden droplet is going to turn off our dark requiem, preventing us from stopping a lot of their bees at effects. So we're going to fog blade one of the bees, and they're going to bring out the scale bomber, they are then going to activate their Kumungus to get rid of our Bardiche. They're going to pass to us and we're going to draw into a boot. We're going to activate the effect of our Dark Requiem and they're going to chain their bug so we negate its effects. We make their Sting Lancer zero, bring our Fog Blade to hand, bring back our Torn Scales, go into a Break Sword. Break Sword is going to pop the Fog Blade and the B. They're going to hit for a nice 54, 2000 and game. I don't know why they didn't use the Nibiru on their turn, but hey, I'm not complaining. All right, game two, and Mel's going first. They're gonna bring out their Neobug and their Scale Bomber. Go into the Armor Horn. Armor Horn is gonna get effect billard by us, and that kind of stops their turn right there. Now let's see if we can take care of them, shall we? So we start with our Torn Scales, and that gets Imperm. Sad, sad, but we got the Cloak and Grave, so that's important. We Foolish Burial away our gloves. We activate the Cloak and Grave to get the boots to hand. We special the boots. Then we go into our Breaksword. Breaksword pop itself, pop the Rhino Boy, and we are going to activate the effect to bring out two fours. We're going to overlay the fours into Dark Rebellion, Dark Rebellion effect, and we get Nibiru. Oh boy, oh joy. Great car, love a Nibiru, good times. Anyway, we're going to continue our combos like nothing ever happened. We're going to go into our boots and our Torrent Skills, go into another Phantom Knight, pop their Nibiru, pop our Phantom Knight. We're going to bring back our boys as fours yet again, and this time we're going to go into the Arc Rebellion XZ's Dragon, because hey, you know, big damage, love a big damage. Hit for 3k, we're going to set two more cards, including our Foglade and our Wing, and pass to them. They get the Resonance Insect, and man, that card should be once per turn. They're going to go through their combos, and I'm just going to I'm just gonna uh, fast forward through this bit, because uh, I don't want to narrate B combo. So they've made a very strong board of Cicada King, and their Rhino's Bust, I think is what it's called. And they pop our Nibiru token after trying to attack our Arc Rebellion, but we had the wing. Anyway, we're going to bring back our uh, two knights, and then we are going to attack into their Cicada King. I don't know why I didn't just activate the effect of Arc Rebellion, because then that would have been game. 
but whatever. Anyway, I try to go into a Bardish during main phase 2 and it gets flying stung and we pass back to them. This turn they're just able to go through their combo and they're going to be able to put us in position where we are unable to win the game anymore. So I'll just fast forward to the end because yeah, we lost this one. Alright, game 3, we're going first, hopefully we can take it because this one's for all the marbles. Now they opened up a droplet, but that won't really affect our turn 1 combo, so we're able to go into our pentastag, get the stain greaves back to hand, special summon the stain greaves after we special summon our torn skills, go into rusty bardish, screw up a little bit because I should have made bardish with the stain greaves and not the torn skills, but whatever, doesn't affect us too much, go into the break sword, pop the break sword, then we're going to bring back our two fours and we're going to overlay them into I believe the evil storm nightmare, yes. We're going to set two more and pass to them. Now Evil Sword Nightmare should be pretty good against their board because turning anything into face down position is just going to like hurt them real bad. Unfortunately they're able to drop with us so they get to do their combo. No interruptions really on their end. We're able to fog lay away their uh, their uh, armor horn and they go into the roller into the other armor horn bringing out another armor horn. Look at all the recursion. They go into the invincible atlas. They attack over our birdish pot their armor horn, bring out the Sting Lancer. We're going to negate the effect of the Sting Lancer, thankfully, and they're going to end their turn. We send our Fog Blade to bring back our Bardish and draw for turn. Now, Bardish is going to activate. We're going to send our other Torn Skills. Thank goodness we have two of this card. We're going to get our uh, Shady Brigadine to hand. We're going to bring out our Torn Skills, activate Shady Brigadine, and we're just going to pop off this turn. We're going to go into Raider's Knight, Raider's Knight effect. We're going to go into Dark or Arc Rebellion, excuse Dragon get 90-50 attack, and realize we can't attack into the Sting Lancer because we forgot to pop the stupid Fog Blade. Anyway, they go into Pick of Felina, they get the uh, Kaiju to hand, they go over our Arc Rebellion, sad, sad, they bring out their Armor Horn, they bring out their Goki Pole, get the Resonance Insect to hand, Armor Horn, bring out the Resonance Insect, go into Pick of Felina, Pick of Felina effect, target Pick of Felina, and you get the picture here. They're going to equip their... Resonance and set to their Picaflina, do a bunch of stuff. We're going to negate the effects of the Picaflina. Thankfully, they're going to go into Access Code Talker. Oh boy, I love Access Code Talker. We're going to Chalice the Access Code Talker, thankfully, so it is not able to, like, annihilate us this turn. Then they go into Doom Dozer. They're going to activate the effect to send the Galaxy Worm and the um, Sting Lancer. No, not the Sting Lancer, the uh, Wing Guy. They're going to attack over our Bardiche, attack over our Torn Skills, attack over the Kumungus, and pass back to us after increasing the attack of their Doom Dozer. We draw into Rota. Rota, we're going to activate getting a boot to hand. We're going to bring back our Phantom Knight and we're going to attack into the Axis Code. And then we're going to go into Zeus. Zeus away their board. Gotta love Zeus. Such a good card. We would have lost this game were it not for Zeus. We're going to activate the effect of our Fog Blade in the end phase to bring back our Raider's Knight. We're going to bring out our two Silent Boots. We're going to go into our Break Sword. Break Sword effect. Pop itself. Pop the... um. Dark Ruler will bring back the two Phantomites yet again, and we're going to go into our Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. We're going to get a uh, rank up magic to hand, rank up the Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. Then we're going to go Zeus attack mode and attack for 8k OTKing them. Once again, Zeus, most important card I own. Well, that last match was a doozy. Now we're going against our boy Pokemonarch playing Zeus Turbo. Anyways, he's going to negate the effects of our Torn Skills, but that's okay. We're able to go into our Pentastag. Activate the effect to special summon our gloves, bring back our torn skills. This time we link away the correct monsters and we attempt to Bardish, but yet again it gets impermed. We're going to send to set a guy, get the boots to hand, overlay for our long long, set one and pass. Not a great, great turn, but whatever. Anyway, they banish our fog blade, making things a lot harder for us. They activate Tenki, getting the Thoroughblade to hand. Thoroughblade is going to activate, sending the Whiptail to draw a card, then they're going to go into their Tiger Mortar. Tiger Mortar effect is going to activate. They're going to get the Whiptail back to their, uh, as material. They're going to attack over our Bardish, and then they're going to go into their Shockanine and into their Zeus. And, you know, big material Zeus, hard to beat. Anyway, we bring out our Raid Raptor and pass over to him, because there's just, there's just not much we can do. He Zeuses, getting rid of our board, and attacks us for 3k on his turn, setting one, passing to us. We draw for turn, we draw into the Raider's Wing, which is not a great pull, so we activate the effect of our Boots and Graveyard to get the rank up to hand. We're going to activate the effect of our Torn Skills that revive to send the Raider's Knight and set one. We're going to get the um, Break Sword to hand, and he's going to Zeus again. And unfortunately, because Raider's Knight does not trigger off his Zeus, we're just going to pass. And after this, he's just going to keep going, attacking us with Zeus. There's not much we can do, unfortunately. 
and when we pass back to him, he's gonna win through damage. All right, for game two, we actually make him go first because if he can't make the Zeus, the thought process is, what's he gonna do? Anyways, we have a pretty goaded hand because we open Taurus Skills. We're gonna Taurus Skills effect, discard. Unfortunately, he has the Chalice, but hey, we sent our Glove, so we're able to send our Cloak, getting a boots to hand. Special Summon the Boots, that'll let us Special Summon one of our Stain Grease. We'll go into our Break Sword. Break Sword, we're gonna pop itself, pop one of his back row. He's gonna Imperm us, but hey, that's okay. We go to the battle phase, hit him for 2k, and pass over after setting a card. Now he draws into his Whiptail, he's gonna go into his Pankratops actually. Pankratops pop our set card, which is gonna be our Fogblade. He's gonna attack us directly with his Zodiac, and then he's going to rank up into the boy himself, Zeus. And yeah, unfortunately for him, we have a monster that can destroy stuff. So we're gonna activate our Break Sword, pop itself, pop the Zeus. He's actually gonna strike the effect, unfortunately. But because he destroyed our monster, we're able to bring out our two boys, as fours. We are then going to bring out our other Stained Greaves, go and do Dark Rebellion because he's Dragon, target the Zeus, he's going to Widow Anchor us, and then Zeus in response, sending everything. Now we are going to send our Fog Blade, bring out our uh, Greaves and our Torn Skills, activate the effect of our other um, Break Sword, target the Zeus this time, and he's only got two more materials, so we're able to bring back our boys yet again, sending the extra Greaves, send the Boots, so we can get the rank up to hand. We're going to go into our Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon and attack him for 3k. Not much he can do in this position with an empty hand and an empty board. He draws into the Bunny Blast, he normals the Bunny Blast, he goes into the Borbo, he attacks directly, but we Ice Dragon's Prison, bringing back the other Borbo and banishing the bow so he can't go into a second Zeus, and we win the game. Game 3, hopefully we don't fumble it like we did last time. Anyway, he makes us go first. We rota for our Torn Skills. Torn Skills is going to go out, and then we're going to bring out our Kagemucha. Torn Skills is going to send. And then we're going to send again, and we're going to get a boots to hand. We're going to go into our Rusty Bardation, only three summons. He's opened the Imperm. Yet again, that card is glued to his hand, but that's okay. We're going to get Fog Blade to our hand, pass to him. Now he's unfortunately stuck on all spell cards, meaning he can't go into Zeus. So we draw into Effect Veiler this turn. We attack him for 21 and pass to him, because I don't want to risk playing into something bad. He brings out his Whip Tail. He's going to go into his Tiger Mortar and then into his uh, Vespinado. He's going to attack over our... Um, Bardish, but we don't Fog Blade this one because you can't use Vespinato as material to turn it summoned. Next, we start comboing off yet again. We go into our Break Sword. Break Sword pop itself, and we're going to pop the Vespinato. He's going to Chalice, but that's fine. So then we're going to rank up our guy into Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon. Nice, nice. Then we're going to bring out our Torn Skills and our uh, Stain Greaves, and we're going to pop the Vespinato this time with no interruptions. We're to bring back our two guys as fours yet again. We're going to overlay for our Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon and hit him for a nice 5,500 amount of damage, which is pretty good. He just activates everything he has in his back row. Unfortunately, it's nothing that really interacts with us, so he's kind of stuck. GG's, we get the second match. All right, for our final match this week, we're going against Rune, and they are playing Starry Knight, a deck that... I forgot was real, if I'm going to be honest. It was released in Ghost of Patches last year. Anyway, they have a back row and their Starry Knight guy. And we open okay. They activate their trap card, which allows them to do something. They use it to bring out their Starry Knight Seiyu. And then they use it to pop our Pentastag. We use the effect of our triple attack to draw two cards, but unfortunately gets Ash. So we're stuck on a defense position guy and a set card. They are then able to attack over our defense position guy, banishing it, and attacking for 25, 418. This is not good. They activate the effect of their Starry Knight card to set another Starry Knight spell trap, and then they bounce their Starry Knight dragon to their hand. It's interesting. It's kind of like a you build around the Starry Knight dragon, like it keeps coming down and popping stuff. It's kind of like a proto Eldritch deck, where you are constantly recurring this one main monster through the use of your spell traps but it's just a little weirder. Anyways, we are not drawing very well, so we are forced to set two and pass off to them. They bring out their Starry Knight, say, are you again? Uh, bop our guy, go and do, hey, that's my monster. And then they attack us for another 25, leaving us at 800. We draw into Kage Mucha, we banish our gloves, and they activate the effect to bounce their guy back to their hand. They activate the guy in graveyard to special summon himself, and we activate our guy in graveyard to get one to hand. They then set another spell trap, and we get our Torn Skills to hand. We Torn Skills, we Special Summon our Kage. We are then met with another Starry Knight Senryaryu guy, and they pop our Kage. That's okay, though, because we send the 
um, boots, and we go into Break Sword. Break Sword is going to pop itself, pop the Starry Knight. Pretty good so far, but unfortunately Starry Knight is immune to destruction. So we then go into our Raider's Knight. Raider's Knight is going to rank itself up. And then we're going to activate the effect of Arc Rebellion, and we're going to attack for a nice chunk of 5,500 damage, if I do say so myself. We're going to get the Fog Blade to hand, and we're going to pass to them. Lo and behold, they activate the effect of their Dark Rebellion, but its effects are negated. Then they activate the effect of their uh, Star Knight Guy in Graveyard to set another spell trap. They use it to get the Dragon to hand, and then they activate the effect to get the other Star Knight to hand into the rotation. We Valor, not Valor, we uh, negate the effects of the Star Knight Dragon because it has the effect to banish, not destroy, and that's very scary to us. So we attack over their Dark Rebellion and then we pass back to them. They bring their Star Knight Dragon back to hand. Then they activate the effect of their Star Knight Guy Engraved to bring out the Field Spell. We set our Fog Blade, we bring out our Torn Skills, they bring out the Star Knight Sayaru, and they are going to pop our Torn Skills. Sad, sad indeed. So we pass back to them. They draw for turn, they bring out their Ravel, they activate the effect of their Ravel to get another spell trap to hand, they activate the effect of the spell trap to get another Starry Knight to hand, they attack out the dragon for the CL, they activate the Obedal in the graveyard, they activate the effect to send that to get another spell trap set, and then they're going to activate the Arrival to bring out the Stay Are You again, popping our Chalice, but we Chalice the boy, and then they activate the Blast to bring him back to their hand, so unfortunately Chalice is negated, then they activate the effect to bring out Stay Are You once again, and they destroy our Nyan Nyan. Nyan Nyan's going to shuffle back our Torn Scales, not very, very many good targets. Anyway, they attack into our guy, and that is game because they're able to banish it, and then attack again for 2500. Now, last game, it really feels like they metagame me. I'm now realizing that uh, their monsters are pretty immune to dark monsters, which is my entire deck. Anyway, we go first, and we go through our combo. We're able to go into our Bardiche. Bardiche effect goes through without a hitch, and we're able to set our back row. We get our um, uh, Greaves to hand, and we special summon it. We go into our Break Sword. Break Sword is going to pop itself, and we're going to do the same old, same old of making ourselves a nice Dark Requiem Xyz Dragon, get all those good negates going, and yeah, we're just off to the races. After that, we get yet another Fog Blade to our hand and pass to them. They're going to draw for turn, and lo and behold, guess what they do? They Lightning Star Must destroy all of our back row. I'm like, oh, hey, they destroyed our back row, it's fine. And then they Super Poly for starting Venom. Oh boy, oh boy. They hit for 28, pass back to us. Things are looking pretty bad. We Fog Blade back, our Greaves, and our Torn Skills comes with it. Then we activate the effect of our uh, Break Sword and pop itself and pop their back row. Then we activate Break Sword to bring back two of our guys. We go into our Raider's Knight, Raider's Knight effect, rank up into the Arc Rebellion. Then we bring out our Stangreaves and our Ancient Cloak, and we go into our Bardiche. We activate Bardiche effect to send one and set one. Then we activate our Boots effect to get a uh, boy to hand. We are essentially just trying to fiend lethal at this point because when the Starving Venom is destroyed, it pops our board. Finally, we were able to get to 10,900 attack, hit for 8,100, and just squeeze that lethal right out from underneath them. Not bad. Not bad at all from an empty board. Final game of the week. Can we get that 3-0? And it's not looking like it with this hand. Ooh, we bricked real bad. Anyway, it's just a face-off of the set and pass, so not too much is going on. We are then going to draw for turn, and we're going to summon our Strangolanius and attack him for 16. I don't know why he didn't do this last week, or last turn, but whatever. And hey, let's see if we can just strangle any beats. Never mind. They're going to use the effect of their lightning storm, but hey, we're able to increase our guy's attack. They're able to get their Sayaru to hand, and they pass back to us. We draw for turn. We are then going to attack for 21. Unfortunately, we can't use our Shade Brigadine to go into anything because we have trap cards in the graveyard. They set one and pass to us. We get our Ancient Cloak to our hand. We attack over their Flamel. Or not their Flamel, their set card, but they use the Flamel to bring out their Sayaru and pop our back row. That's okay, though. They draw an Ash for turn. They activate their Star Knight's die. They activate their guy to bring their dragon back to their hand. Then they set their uh, Spell Trap. They bring out the Ravel. Ravel's going to activate We Effect Veiler that, thankfully. And then they're going to activate the effect of their Spell Trap, bring out the Sayaru. is going to pop, but we're going to Effect Veiler that as well. Thank you, Effect Veiler. Everyone say thank you, Effect Veiler. They're going to go into Dark Rebellion. Dark Rebellion effect, have our Strangolanius increase its attack. Then they're going to go into the CL. They're going to Super Poly away our board and go into a very, very strong board as well. And they're going to OTK us from here. Unfortunate, I know, but that's just the way the news goes. Now, the reason why I said OTK was I can't play against this. How am I supposed to play against the Spheres? Most powerful card in the game. Man, Starry Knight. Who would have knew that would have been our downfall? 
Who woulda knew? Granted, we bricked, but still, Starry Night puts up a hell of a punch, I gotta say. Well, overall, we did okay. Pulls weren't great, but I think overall, I enjoyed how the deck played this week, and I had a lot of fun dueling all of our friends. Next week, of course, we're going to be going back to Gold and Dark Neostorm, but next week, we're going to be increasing the amount of Dark Neostorm and decreasing the amount of Gold I opened because I really want those Cherubinis. I need the Cherubini in my life. It's just that important for the deck. Also, for the foreseeable future, we're still going to be doing EDO Pro, which is unfortunate. But if you would like me to do remote duels, make sure to let me know down below. Maybe I can finagle one or two. Maybe every other week I could do one. I don't know. If you want to see that, let me know. If all goes well, I'd like to get back to Locals by March. That's the plan, at least. We'll see how things are going then. All right. Thank you all for joining me again this week, and I hope to see you again next week.